Good morning, Tuesday morning, heading now to Ag Tech, that's Agriculture Tech, an event in Tel Aviv, going with Sea Tree. Super pumped about it because I'm actually really excited about this space, which is yet another vertical Israel's dominating, and uh, looking forward to meeting some incredible investors who came from outside of Israel and just entrepreneurs, startups, etc. It's going to be a super geeky day, and um, you're going to get to meet some fascinating people. Let's do this. University, 8 a.m. Ag Tech starts now. I would imagine I'll probably be the first person there. Maybe not, I'm not sure. But it's going to be a really, really exciting day. It's one of those industries, agriculture, that is old school, primitive, and is in the midst of being disrupted by technology and innovation, which is the type of industries that I love most. Now just to find the auditorium and hope and pray that there's air conditioning. even 9 a.m. here at Ag Tech. Look at this place. Look behind me. It is popping. And I just met Doron, this good looking guy next to me. He looked very short next to you, man. And you like, here we go. That's better. No, yeah, he's isn't that, opti right. Optical yeah. illusion. Look at that. You yeah. look, stand, go back, go all the way back. <laughs> now you see that. I like yeah. it. What do you do, Doron? So we are a growing IL. It's a, we are leading the Ag Tech Israeli community. We are not profit, non revenue, help all the relevant players yeah. to it. connect together here in Israel and aboard and trying to, be, to make this. Uh, ecosystem better, stronger, bigger, and uh, yeah, with a relevant solution for the global uh, challenges and active. Dude, you're like a pitching machine. I'm trying to. That was to. really good. Yeah, I'm trying You're hired. To. Looking I'm, for a job? I uh, know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to training about my pitch what's your, later on the what, stage. So. What's, what's your background? Shiri from Lahav, executive education, oh, Shabbat, yeah. Oh, my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a second, I need coffee. Say hi. Yeah, say hi. Hey. So give me your background. What, what so you just mean? coming from, uh, originally from uh, consulting, the big corporate in Israel, in the area of sustainability and CSR and just a launch growing ale less than two years ago so it's a new one but it's it's kicking it's dynamic and love it. yeah. what's the website search in the Facebook growing ale smart agriculture yeah. community love it man thank you so yeah, much thank you I know it's, I, it's so early in the morning pre coffee to do an interview it takes guts man I appreciate it yeah. have a good day yeah thank you Wait, what is this what is this this is this is honey that has been produced inside a machine with AI AI produced honey AI produced honey why Please do I need honey. AI to produce honey don't use it on toast on breakfast toast okay explain why because it's very expensive there's no more than no out of it should be should be cheap if there's no manpower involved well, we you made this be wise we made this in a machine what is be wise be wise is a big machine that hosts 40 hives and it's a completely autonomous hive there's no humans involved people don't come to take care of the bees i need to understand does. this a little bit more yeah. two minutes come back i want to interview her first you haven't had your coffee yet, so you're a gutsy, gutsy woman. Courageous, very courageous. I know. Who are you? What's your name? Etty, right? Etty Levy. Etty Levy. Who is Etty Levy? Etty Levy, uh, co-founder of the Bridge Hub, uh, agri and food tech innovation hub based in Australia, in Wagga Wagga. Have you been to Wagga Wagga? Is that really a place? It's really a place. Wagga Wagga? Wagga Wagga, yeah. You gotta tell me the story behind that name. Why is it called that? It's an uh, Aboriginal name, which means many crowds. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so what is, what is the Bridge Hub? So the Bridge Hub is actually creating a bridge globally and creating a collaborative ecosystem to help start up in the agri and food tech space. So we do two things. We help Israeli startup validate their technology. So Love it. We bring them to Australia, match them with the right bring, partners. Bring me to Australia. <laughs> anyway, don't you? If you have an ag agri... You've been there soon, no? Yeah, I, was there, I, was yeah, at, uh, I went there for like um, a couple of different talks in Melbourne and Sydney. The most relaxed place ever. I was like missing the action. I was like, why is no one honking their horn here? Anyway, come yeah. to Wagga, there's action. Okay. Uh, so we help Israeli startup come to Australia and validate their technology because they're doing trials in Israel it's nice it's cool but it's not enough right. and then once we bring them to Australia we actually see their interaction with the clients uh, and then we're able to give 
you know, a good due diligence on the companies and okay. if necessary to invest. Super awesome. We also take uh, Australian technology and IP or entrepreneur at an early stage and help them go global, so commercialize the, the technology because they're very good in research, but the commercialization stage sucks. Yeah, so, I hear that. <laughs> very well familiar with that phenomenon, okay. So that's what we do, we bridge the ecosystem, we also work with other locations like Latin America. What's your uh, website? Thebridgehub.co. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you get coffee. Let's, we're in touch, right? We're connected online? Sure. All right, so shoot me an email or a LinkedIn or whatever, let's have a cup of coffee. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, the interviews today are gonna be pretty bouncing because there's like a million amazing people here, but when Barack tells me that I need to meet someone, I don't ask questions, I just say when and where. Who are you, what's your name? My name is Shai, Shai Albaranes. You know, your, your name sounds like an ag tech person. <laughs> What's the last name again? Albaranes. So Albaranes sounds, sounds like an ag tech Spanish, company. Spanish in, in origin. You know what I mean though, right? Yes. Like I feel like all these companies end with Anis. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, okay, so what do you do? What's your story? Talk to me. In a nutshell, I'm the VP Innovation of Orbia. Orbia is the company that acquired Netafim last year. Okay. It's a $7 billion organization. Your company is a $7 billion and you're the VP what? Innovation and Ventures. All right, so I'm honored to know you. Thank you very much. Honored to be talking to you. Honored to be known. Wait, but so before before this, like we know each other for from different directions. Yes. You said you're friends with the Algura. Yes. The Algura is a legend, total legend, and Zell and all kinds of different directions. In this ecosystem, I feel like everyone knows everyone. But what did you do before this position? So I have a very eclectic uh, background. Okay. So I had my own startup when I uh, was 22. Okay. We developed a board game for kids to teach them the history of Israel. Really? Yes. Wow. That's awesome. Then I went to do computer science in the IDC, Zell entrepreneurship program, uh, some startup work. Then in 2007, I started crossing the, dark, the, dark the other side. line. Okay. I did my MBA at INSEAD, okay. joined McKinsey as a consultant. Oh, get out of here. You work yeah. with Michael Block? Uh, I worked in London. Oh, okay. I know Michael. I love Michael. Like, I, have, I have a man crush on Michael. He's going to be embarrassed that I just said <laughs> that, but I, it's true. I love the guy. He's such an amazing guy. Forget he's the amazing. fact that he's brilliant. He's just mensch. He's anyway. amazing. Okay, yeah, go on. Uh, I did that for four years. Then I joined Netafim. I did Netafim for six years. It's funny to hear it with an American accent. Why? I say Netafim, you're saying Netafim. I'm like, what's Netafim? Yeah, Netafim, yeah, okay. Yeah. Netafim. Yeah, okay. Netafim for six years, and then we were acquired by Orbia. Okay. And last year, the new CEO of Orbia uh, asked me to become the head of innovation and ventures and build and build innovation for uh, for the group. That was probably a good day for you. It was. You got that phone I, I didn't realize how <laughs> great day it was. I'm so happy that we had this opportunity. So tell me about the organization. What do you guys do? What's like? So we're active in uh, five different verticals. So agriculture is one of them. We're very active in water with uh, big brands in Europe and in Latin America that do municipal water infrastructure, uh, building water infrastructure, hot and cold systems. We have a fiber optic division, fiber optic uh, infrastructure. And then we have two other uh, divisions that are material based. First one is coming from the floor basic material. It's a very, very, very important material for the Western world. It's the foundation for air conditioned gases, medical inhalers, lithium ion batteries, wow. amazing material. Wow. And, and we have big mines in Mexico. Incredible. And the last uh, business that we own is a polymer business. We do everything from commodity polymer to specialty polymers and serve multiple Incredible, dude. multiple industries. I think the conclusion is clear. You need to have a cup of coffee. I only have one coffee a day, so. Well, all right, and it, save and it, it for and me. And it's black coffee. <laughs> it's black coffee thing, but we'll, we, should, we, we have a lot to talk about. Right, listen, I, like people say to me all the time, because I see a lot of tech, right? People say to me, what's like, what's my main, let's call it passion, or what, what excites me most? To me right now, the most exciting spaces, in my opinion, are healthcare, health tech, and you know that whole world, and this world. Of, let's call it ag tech, food tech, all the, you know, everything you're talking about. This stuff is like fascinating to me because you know five, ten years ago, I never even thought about this as a space that's waiting to be disrupted. It's just agriculture, but it's happening. So we'll have a cup of coffee. I appreciate the time. You've had your coffee already, though. Not yet. Oh God, you have, go have your coffee, man. Fantastic to meet you. Thank you. Let's connect. We'll I guess LinkedIn or wherever, and we'll do it. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's not often that I get the opportunity to do what I'm about to do right now. And when an opportunity like this knocks on my door, I grab it. So you guys may have met. If you're, if you're, you know, avid watchers of the vlog, you may have met Israel. I think probably, I would say, 200 episodes ago. But that was the last time we had the chance to get you on video. And you know, irrelevant of the fact that we worked together at Tea Tree, like the, the first meeting in the office, I was like, I got to work with this guy. So tell me. 
what you, what you can tell me. Tell me your background, what you can say. Tell me who you are, who is Israel Talapaz, and then we'll talk about teaching in a minute. Who are you? Great to see you again, Eliel. Always great. Yeah, great. Well, I finished about three years ago a short career of 33 years in the Israeli uh, defense establishment. Okay. I was in intelligence and operations uh, many years. And when I got out, I wanted to connect to the real world and my farming background. I have a family background in farming. My father is still an uh, entrepreneur. The guru of the, of the, the guru. farming world, yes. Farming world of the Vulcan Institute, the kibbutz, uh, Texas A&M, all of this. And I wanted to hook up to that and bring some of the know-how and experience that I gained in the intelligence world to the world of farming, which I saw had lacked a lot of tools and technology. I just want to say one thing. When people ask me, and I'm sure that you get this question all the time, people ask me all the time, you know, how did Israel become, you know, blah, 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 startup nation, all the, whatever you want to call it, right? So there's obviously books written on the topic, and there's a lot to say about it, but when people say to me, what, play, what role does the military play in that? You're, you're a manifestation of that. You took your 30 years of experience, 30 plus years of experience from that world, and literally applied the principles. I don't know if you know the book, Extreme Ownership. You ever hear that book? No, no. Okay. Do you trust me? Yeah. All right, listen. Do you have enough time to read ever? Uh, on flights. You must. But like, okay, must read this book. Okay. How did I hear about it? From Mark Andreessen. Personally. He personally recommended this book to me. Okay. Jocko Willick is the, is the author. He was a Special Forces U.S. Army, and then he took his principles that he learned in the, in the Special Forces and applied them to business. About owning it. You gotta own it. Yep. You never delegate responsibility. You right. own up to it. That's Brilliant. Brilliant book. So you, you took the principles that you learned from that world and you applied them in business, which is, again, the manifestation of everything that is Israeli innovation. Okay. Continue. Well, the, the most important thing about that is is gaining the culture, the DNA and the culture that you gain there, and you get the uh, "Who dares wins" slogan that we grew up on, right. and and we dare, we dare, and we're willing to try, and and that's. That's what we did. We formed a, a company here that, that specializes in, in intelligence for trees and had a, an amazing team now, 70 people. Except for 70. one advisor, he's not. One, one advisor is, is, is a weak. bit weak. <laughs> But we're now 70 people strong. 70 people. 70 people in two years. Unbelievable. Two years, exactly two years. To simplify this, to like really simplify this, we as human beings have diseases, we have conditions. The world of healthcare, trees are no different. As exactly we know, trees same. are living organisms, okay? Now, there are certain types of conditions, diseases that trees have that could easily infect an entire crop. Now, me and you, me and most people in this room, well, maybe not in this room, but in the Western world, crop, farming, tree, they don't even, they don't really think about it very often, but the reality is a farmer's trees, a farmer's crop is, is everything. Everything, everything. Now, how does a farmer, you know, monitor the health of, the, of his or her trees? Literally with ladders and flashlights. Like, what are we doing in 2019? Up till today, they do it with their eyes and their legs and their intuition, okay? That, these are their tools. Even the biggest farmers and the most highly sophisticated farmers do it the same. They just have more people, but they do it based on the eyes and their legs, and, and that's it. The tools that technology has provided farming up till today haven't been good enough, okay? We weren't able to penetrate and give them enough value to make them replace their eyes and their legs with these tools. Right. I think today... Sorry, I, I'm going to correct you on that. Not replace, compliment. Compliment, right. Because we I don't totally want to take away their intuition. Right. Uh, we we want to add to their intuition right. and add to their eyes and their experience, all that. But provide them with the tools that technology has today. AI capabilities, drones, imagery, cloud computing, Amazing. all of these together enable this. So, 70 people working at the company, raised significant capital from incredible investors, to name one, and this is public information, the founder of Waze. Now, why is that interesting? Because what is Waze? What we're doing here is we're building a map for trees, a map of trees, right? So that's the really, that's the synergy there. I think it's fair to say, and this is pretty much an objective fact, Sea Tree is probably in the top five, if not the top three, fastest growing ag tech companies in the world today. We're fortunate in this, yes. I mean, the I growth here is hyper growth. Hyper growth, we have paying customers, major paying customers. Don't give away information, we want to, yeah, want to do a press here soon. <laughs> so, so, so we have huge customers in California, in Brazil, in Chile, Love it. Far East, all over, and everything is, is word of mouth coming to us. Uh, tough time managing this, but we want to help and we want to, we want to uh, help as many as we can. The only thing I need from you is to stop traveling so much so we can hang out more. But let's just say this. 
we'll, we'll end this interview because you got things to do, but let's just say one thing. Big news coming. Yes. Big, big news coming. That's true. It's incredible. I, you know, every day that I work with C Tree is an honor to me, for me, and I hope we'll, to, you know, till the IPO and after. Thank you. Thank pleasure, you, man. Thank always, you. Always, always fun. I love it. Thanks. Okay, I know I say this a lot. You'll forgive me, but I'm a big Amir Mizrach fan. What can I tell you? People say, you know, the problem is, I'll tell you the, the problem, right? The problem is because of what I do, I'm surrounded with smart people. And so I, I say the same thing. He's a legend. I'm a fan. People think I don't mean it. But but it's the truth. What am I going to tell you? I'm a big Amir Mizrach fan. Okay, so before we talk about what you do, before we talk about where we are, give me like 30 seconds your elevator pitch. Who are you? I am Israeli. Israeli born to Russian parents. You know that. Yeah. Okay. And I grew up in South Africa. So Mizrach's not your original name? Who knows what our original name is? <laughs> That's a fair point. That's a fair point. Yeah. But uh, I, I like to think to, of myself as Afro-Israeli. Afro-Israeli. Afro because, you know, I grew up in South Africa. I feel very much South African. Interesting. But uh, I'm very much Israeli. I'll be there soon. I, and, uh, oh, you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. We yeah. yeah. vacation. We'll talk about it off camera, but no, not vacation. There's a, there's a cool tech company that I'm uh, engaging with over there. We'll talk about it. Yeah, anyway, go on. And I just think both countries are great. And I don't know, that's just how I feel. Love it. Okay, so professionally speaking, before what you do now, where were you before? So I was a journalist before, many years at the Jerusalem Post. A, a journalist, you say that like you're like, like me, I'm a journalist. You weren't just a journalist, you were... I was a journalist. I was a hard-working journalist. Big-time journalist. Hard-working journalist. I was at uh, the Jerusalem Post, Israel Ayon, and then the Wall Street Journal, where I was the tech editor for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So, Middle East, what did you say? Europe, Middle Europe, Middle Middle East, East. EMEA. EMEA. Wow. EMEA. Big, how long uh, were you there for in Wall Street Journal? Just over two years. That's incredible. That must have been an experience. That was a learning curve. That was a big learning curve. You know, I, you don't know this. Maybe you do. I don't know. But obviously, we all wear a lot of different hats. One of my hats is a journalist, you know, I guess in some sense of the word. But the reality is, like, I've learned over the years, honestly, both from following you on Twitter, but also in our in our meetings. A lot of times you'd be like, that's not a hook. What's the hook? Like, you really, you, you, not, you were, when I, that's why I say, you're not yeah. just a journalist. There's a lot of journalists out there. But you're like old school journalists, like real yeah. journalists, that's what I mean. Well, I think, I think, I think. That the, the, the dynamic between us is is that we kind of bring out a lot of the stuff that you're interested in, the stuff that I'm interested in, to a much bigger audience. Like the, the fact that you're here at AgriVest, I think, and you bring your style to AgriVest is important because agri food tech, in my opinion, is more important than cyber and fintech uh, because this is our food, our it's planet. Less, less sexy, less flashy. Yah, but it's you know, it's it's uh, it's day to day. It's what we eat. It's right. what we breathe. It's what we drink. Right. Okay, so now, what do you do now? So we're we're focusing on a story, uh, and I think the hook is almost every couple of weeks now we're seeing. Who's we, um, by the way? People don't know what you Startup do. Startup Nation Central. I'm the director of communications. We're an NGO, an Israeli tech NGO that kind of builds bridges between Israeli innovation and the big challenges around the world. So it came out of. Sorry to interrupt you. I apologize. It came. It just correct me if I'm wrong. Historically speaking, you know the book Startup Nation. that everyone knows. Yeah. Ten years ago, September. Wow. Ten, it's ten years. Incredible. Ago. Has yeah. become a global phenomenon. Translated into how many languages? Do you know? Over a hundred. Over a hundred languages. Who doesn't know the word startup nation, right? So the authors and you know families and their surroundings said, wait, you gotta do something here. This is like a, you know, we've we built this this quote unquote brand. And so many people around the world are talking about Startup Nation. Yeah. Let's capitalize on that, but not in a monetary way, but for Israel. Right. So they built this thing called Startup Nation Central, an NGO, that the goal, what's the mission here? The mission really is to strengthen Israel's economy through its innovation ecosystem. And the way to do that really is to bring global companies, corporations, multinationals, governments, towns, cities, whoever it is who has a big challenge, right? Whether it's, you know, agricultural challenge, or a business challenge or a cyber challenge and they want to innovate, they need to evolve. And because we have a very small market here and we have this bursting uh, innovation energy here, we can help to solve those problems. Is it fair to say, I'm curious on your take on this, because I think this is a fair statement, I say it all the time, is it fair to say that with all the hype and all the buzz and all the tech crunch articles about Israeli tech and all the everything, people don't have any clue, even the tip of the iceberg of what's happening in this country? I think a lot of people are starting to to get it. We're seeing a, a really, really hockey stick increase in the amount of multinationals setting up, not just R&D centers here, because that used to be the, the thing, 
They used to come here, acqui hire a bunch of guys, uh, and then set up an R&D center. Now we're seeing they're expand. The longer they spend here, the more diversified their innovation activity is. So they're doing joint ventures. They're setting up cor corporate venture capital. They're doing a whole bunch of things. Not just R&D. People are starting to get it. And I think that we're now also seeing another trend: is a growing group of Israeli scale-ups that are opening up offices around the world. So people are coming into contact with Israeli tech, Waze, Orcam, Move It, Fiverr, so many now. Apps Flyer, App Similar Web, you know, exactly. go on and on. So, so many. So people are starting to actually engage with Israeli tech day to day. Right. Uh, Even in so the consumer space. Which especially is, in the consumer space, which is new. Right. Sort of, that is really lemonade. Yeah. Lemonade. It's unbelievable. Sure. Okay, so you mentioned something before that I, I think is fascinating because I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but you guys are, you know, in addition to being an engineer, you're also a data warehouse. Right. If anybody wants to, people say to me all the time, where do I find out about Israeli tech? What's the hot companies? Where? Startup Nation Central. So you have kind of access or a broader perspective on, you know, the trends, let's yeah. say. You said something to me before that fascinated me, and that's the second wave. Talk to me about the second wave. Second wave of agri food tech innovation. So we have a big research team and a product team for Startup Nation Finder, which is an innovation discovery platform. It's a database, but it's live. We watch the ecosystem in real time. We're watching over six and a half thousand currently active innovation companies. I just want to emphasize that point for one second. A country smaller than New Jersey in the most unstable region on planet Earth, six and a half thousand startups. Bananas. Currently active, active. with their own tech product, their own R&D, their own algorithms. There are a lot of, a lot more startups that are um, uh, outsourced app developers, design houses. So we're talking about over eight, nine thousand. And, and then about 500 in stealth that we see. Wow. Right? Incredible. So we, we are seeing now in the agri-food tech sector a real uh, new wave based on um, big data, computer vision, robotics, drones, uh, biotech. Now, why we think it's a second wave? Because we know the first wave of Israeli innovation, which was based on our own existential need, right? Drip irrigation, Tomatoes. new food, all that kind of stuff. But then we then export it to other places that needed drip irrigation. People don't know the cherry tomatoes. Is there. I think people know cherry tomatoes. Yeah, but, 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 but cherry tomatoes is just one example right. of new food, right? New food uh, seeds and strains and that kind of stuff that we did at the Balkani Center. What we're seeing now are new companies based on big data analytics that, let's say, take drip irrigation now to precision irrigation, all right? We're seeing stuff in alternative protein, right? So uh, cultured meat, lab-grown meat, which could really alter the food industry. I can't sign my name on that, sorry. Okay, no, no. <laughs> that's fine. I would love to see you eat one I'm of those. I'm dying to try one. Day. John Medved keeps telling me to try the Beyond Burger. Yeah, I gotta, yeah. I gotta get eventually it'll this. happen. Yeah. I think also the one thing that I'm really interested in is, is uh, like I said earlier, companies taking on global challenges. So there's a couple of companies, um, Amai and Duma Talk and a few others that are taking on the sugar industry. Right, it's unbelievable. Right, so through manipulating proteins, through actual hard science to make your food taste sweet, we're gonna reduce diabetes, reduce obesity, reduce tooth decay, depression, all the kind of things. There's a company called Tipa, which is compostable, decom decomposing, biodegradable plastic packaging. Plastic's a massive problem. It's killing wildlife, killing the seas. Uh, so this is a, a new wave, a second wave of agri-food tech innovation that we think is gonna make a huge impact. It brings a whole new meaning to the phrase, a light onto the nation. Yes. I love it. Amir, always, always a blast. Next time we should have steak. This doesn't count. This doesn't replace that. But dude, keep doing what you're doing, man. We all depend on it. The whole ecosystem. Thank you very much. You too. Dude, so Wendy, Wendy's the great. Your whole team. Everybody in your team. You guys are a bunch of rock stars. Wendy, anyway, if there's ever anything I can do to help, you know, I don't even need to say. Well, you, you know. are helping. I think if you, if you have a look around here, there's a lot of uh, corporate people, a lot of investors, a lot of founders. But I think that the tech ecosystem as a whole hasn't gotten into agri-food tech yet. It, you, it used to be that you know you go to a tech conference and it's just tech. Right. Now you go to a tech conference right. and it's food and it's agriculture. Right. Who, whoever thought I'd be excited about agriculture. Right. Anyway, dude, thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck today and this is the whole week. Yeah. Thanks. Yet another super important. You actually have the, the distinguished look with the white hair. You look very important. Well, but you are very important. You. So it works out well for you. Who are you? What's your name? My name is uh, Tom Cross. What do you do? Well, I work for the uh, Netherlands uh, Foreign Investment Agency, which is a IPA, an international uh, promotion agency, and we're helping foreign companies, in my case, from Israel, 
to set up the activities in the Netherlands. Awesome. Where do we meet, by the way? Well, right now we are at AgriVest, which is one of the top, I would say, uh, meeting places for all, everyone that's involved in the agro food sector. That's where we are now, but where do we originally meet? Like, where do we know each other from? Well, we know each other from a, my cousin, actually. My cousin is Dave Grunberg, you know him. That's and right. that's the same hair. No, that's so funny. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even make that connection. That's really, yeah, right. I totally forgot about that. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, so, so we've had several places, several right. places. That's right. I know you from, okay. I because I'm from the tech, the tech angle, but I forgot that connection. That's okay. the next one. Yeah. Okay, so. It's all small, you know. Right. So <laughs> you're based here? Yeah, I'm based here. Okay, so give me your background. Well, I came into Israel 28 years ago. Wow. So 1991. From? From the Netherlands. So, okay. Yeah. And uh, how was that transition? Quite a transition. It's Netherlands, different. Israel? It's, it's like, different. But yeah. you know, it's for everyone that's from an Anglo Saxon or European country, it's different. Right. Yeah. Okay, and so you're, you live where? I live uh, next to Tel Shamir. Very nice. In the center. Very cool. And so. Yeah. Give me your like professional background before this. Like, how long have you been at this company? Next, no, it's not a company. It's, a, it's an agency, agency, part of the ministry. Okay. So right. I'm here for six years now. Okay. I work in high tech sector, like uh, doing business development sales for various uh, American and also Israeli companies. Super cool. So, so right now you take it. So explain to me like how it works. Give me the flow. What okay. do you do for Israeli companies right now? Okay. So actually, my first job actually will be to look for companies that are uh, growing and are looking to expanding into European markets. So at the moment they are ready to expand. They are thinking about where do I should I put up my my next office or my factory or my R&D, right? And then we come into it, into place, and then we start to talk to these companies and sell it. What are you looking for? What do you need? Right. And many times, the Netherlands might be an interesting place for them. But the first, first thing is really proactively approaching companies. They're not coming to us. If, a, if an entrepreneur is watching this and they want to yeah. get in touch with you, what's the best place? Do you, what's your website or what's the best place so to follow? So it's investinholland.com. You can find us through, through that uh, website. Love it. Investinholland.com. What a great domain. Yes, yes, yeah. It's great. Well, you're Fantastic. all over the world. We're not just in Israel. We're also in the States. We have offices in Australia, Dubai, Eastern all over, over the world. I don't have many many dreams or many items on my bucket list that I've that I've not accomplished meaning when I when I when I have a dream I try to do it okay the, one of the only things left on my bucket list is to visit Dubai okay I really really want to go no problem for you make you it have, happen man let's you go meet you have a foreign passport that's yes, no problem American. No. that is no problem we gotta do it it's like Las there. Vegas uh, without gambling though I love it <laughs> okay. awesome man thank you so much thank keep you. doing what you're doing fantastic to connect again man thanks Bye.